Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever you are. Thank you very much for being here. Um, my name is Marcus Nitu. I'm the director of the United Nations Development Program, UNDP Finance Sector Hub. And I'm going to open this meeting um, and conduct you in the first part and then um, hand it over to my brother in crime, Mr. Ben Dixon at OECD. I welcome everybody to supporting for finance for developing the era of COVID-19 and beyond through the tax inspectors without borders. This crisis that we're facing has made it urgent to deliberate and reflect it on the role of multilateralism and how we can work together to support countries and millions of people in need. As we mark this year, the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, this is a very relevant time to discuss, discuss the role of international cooperation and the tax inspectors without border is one of the best example of this cooperation. And I welcome you all today for participating in this discussion. We have a very excited time ahead of us. Before, I would like to inform you of a few housekeeping. Please note that the webinar is being recorded and you need to accept it. The recording to attend the webinar. Interpretation to French is provided. You may select the interpretation channel of your choice at the bottom of the Zoom window. All panelists should remain in the original language to allow for interpretation into French. I would like to remind our speakers today to please mute the microphones unless you are intervening. We will start the event with the recorded speeches of His Excellency Vili Skinari, Minister for Development, Cooperation and Foreign Trade from Finland and TIWB government body member and the TIWB government body co-chairs, Mr. Angel Gurria, Secretary General of OECD and Mr. Achim Steiner, Administrator of UNDP. Please let us have those videos, remarks, um, colleagues. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, as co-chair of the OECD UNDP Tax Inspectors Without Borders, it is my pleasure to welcome you to today's important discussion. We are facing an unprecedented global crisis with profound implications. The COVID-19 pandemic is affecting every aspect of our lives. Now, while COVID-19 does not discriminate between rich and poor, developing countries have been among those hardest hit. Domestic resources, which are the main source of financing for developing, for developing countries, have been put under immense strain. Sharp declines in Global and domestic trade have lowered tax revenues from goods and services, and many small island developing states are collecting few revenues from commodities, natural resources, and tourism. In many sectors, multinational enterprises are better equipped to sustain the impacts of COVID-19, while small and medium-sized enterprises are struggling to survive. In this context, Tax Inspectors Without Borders remains an important tool to ensure developing countries collect all the taxes due from multinational enterprises. And there is a lot more that we can do to help. Today, we launch the 2020 Tax Inspectors Without Borders annual report. It reflects on TIWB's achievements from January 2019 to June 2020. It also includes information on our recent stock-taking exercise and sets out recommendations for the future. Now, demand for tax inspectors without borders continues to grow. Strong demand for 
TIWB assistance confirms that addressing compliance among MEs is a high priority for developing countries. And with tolerance for international tax avoidance and tax evasion at an all time low, we expect demand to grow further. Developing countries report that TIWB programs are, supposed, are supporting domestic efforts to implement international tax standards, as well as their participation in the inclusive framework on base erosion and profit shifting, the so-called BEPS. So Tax Inspectors Without Borders is helping build the capacity of developing countries that, you know, that, that they can have better equipped, better skilled, better trained tax auditors. And they do this through on the job experience to ensure that domestic tax laws are being applied appropriately, that governments are collecting the tax revenue that they are owed the fair share. Our 2020 annual report shows that to this date, additional tax revenues raised by developing countries through 80 Tax Inspectors Without Borders programs currently exceed 537 million US dollars. But with an overall tax assessment in excess of 1.8 billion US dollars. So TIWB represents excellent value for money with a return on investment of about $70 for every dollar that has been spent. 70 to one. Where else can you get this kind of return? So we want to keep growing. Despite the constraints imposed by the COVID-19 crisis, TIWB remains open for business thanks to the measures that are helping our experts deliver assistance remotely. We're extending the TIWB focus to provide support in other areas of taxation, including tax crime investigations and the effective use of automatically exchanged information, both of which will help fight illicit financial flows. We're also rolling out programs to cover tax treaty negotiations and tax treaty administration, tax and natural resource contracts, tax and the environment. So to lead uh, TIWB operations in this new era, I am pleased to announce that uh, Ms. Rusudan Kemularia has been appointed the new head of the Tax Inspectors Without Borders Secretariat. She's a Georgian national, and we believe Ms. Kemularia uh, because of her experience, she's actually spent a decade working on tax matters, including as Georgia's Vice Minister of Finance, that she will bring a lot of experience to this job. We're enthusiastic about the new energy and direction that she will bring to the TIWB initiative. So ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, in this crisis, we need to keep up the momentum to improve domestic revenue mobilization. Therefore, TIWB remains a best practice example of how effective 21st century development assistance should be designed, developed, and delivered. This is critical as we usher in a decade of ambitious action 
to deliver the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Thank you for your continued support. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, dear Angel, I'm honored to address you at this annual Tax Inspectors Without Borders event. I would like to thank the government of Finland, which is co-hosting this event, and His Excellency Ville Skenari for his opening remarks. Let me also thank the Secretary General of the OECD, my dear friend and colleague, Angel Guria, for his, as always, insightful remarks. We mark the 75th anniversary of the United Nations this year, in the midst of a pandemic, the likes of which we have never seen before. The OECD projects that global GDP will fall by 4.5% this year, the most dramatic economic slowdown since the Second World War. Global human development, a combination of the world's education, health and living standards, is set to decline in 2020 for the first time in 30 years. As a result of the pandemic, the capacity of developing countries to mobilize domestic resources has been severely compromised. Economies in Sub-Saharan Africa alone could lose up to 79 billion in output losses in the year 2020 due to COVID-19. Thus, the need for greater revenue generation and improved tax administration, especially when it comes to financing for development, is more critical than ever. The High-Level Forum on Financing for Development in the era of COVID-19 is now working on a number of policy options to tackle many of these problems, including to leverage the record fiscal and monetary response to the crisis to lay a path towards achieving a global green economy, including by leveraging integrated national financing frameworks. To create a global sustainable financial system capable of delivering collective needs where both public and private sectors are accountable for their policies, decisions and investments. And to harness digitalization to permanently close equity gaps, a roadmap for which is set out in the UN Secretary General's Task Force on Digital Financing for the SDGs that we launched recently in the month of August. In this evolving context, Tax Inspectors Without Borders continues to be a key tool at the disposal of countries. The initiative has achieved impressive results since the last UN General Assembly. In the period of September 2019 to July 2020, Tax Inspectors Without Borders has helped developing countries collect 37 million in tax revenue, taking the total collected so far to over 537 million. And tax assessed through its programs has reached $1.84 billion an increase of a further 94 million in the same period. Since that time, eight additional countries are implementing or have implemented a new Tax Inspector Without Borders program. That brings the total number of host countries to 44, with another eight countries set to join over the next two months. Since the pandemic hit, the initiative has continued its crucial work, helping countries to benefit from tax audit knowledge and skills. It is successfully delivering technical assistance using technology. Its tax experts have undertaken more than 40 virtual missions across 14 countries. The pandemic has also shown a light on the opportunities for tax regimes. Digitalization made it possible for tax administrations to operate remotely and continue collecting much needed revenue. With this in mind, UNDP will be working to support the digitalization of tax systems in follow-up to the recommendations of the UN Secretary General's Task Force on Digital Financing of the SDGs. We have also seen many countries requesting support on tax policy via the UN's Joint SDG Fund. Again, UNDP will be stepping up with its services to respond to this need. Tax Inspectors Without Borders is playing a key role in helping developing countries to recover from the pandemic. That includes its existing range of services as detailed in its annual report being launched today and also a new range of services including on the relationship between taxation and the environment and natural resources. This service aims at increasing domestic revenues while supporting the transition to greener, more sustainable economies at the same time. I would like to end by expressing my gratitude to the OECD and my dear friend and colleague Angel Gurria for your continued cooperation on this initiative, which continues to expand and innovate. Thank you. Distinguished partners, ladies and 
gentlemen. I hope you are well and safe. Thank you for joining us today. And again, special thanks to UNDP and OECD for this partnership that we in Finland are very proud of. Progressive taxation and tax-funded public services, social protection and infrastructure are fundamentally important, building blocks of democratic, well-functioning and sustainable societies. Since I addressed this meeting last year, you have worked hard at UNDP, the OECD and the wider UN system to promote tax justice and domestic resource mobilization. Finland has also been active and in June this year we launched our new taxation for development action program. I'm happy that we had Ms. Jutta Urpilainen, the EU Commissioner for Global Partnerships, launching it with us. Since this not only my close colleague and Finland's former Minister of Finance, but also one of the driving forces in the EU-African Union partnership to curb illicit financial flows and enhance domestic taxation capacities in Africa. Tax Inspectors Without Borders is one of Finland's key partners in this work. We are supporting it through our funding partnership with the UNDP. We all realize that we can achieve much more by working in partnership both UNDP and the OECD than by working alone. Going forward, we hope that this Tax Inspectors Initiative can capitalize on the relative strengths of all partners. The fact that UNDP has a country office in every country of the Global South is definitely an asset. We also know that UNDP has been a leader in the UN family on two aspects that are critically important for success. One is capacity development and the other is South-South cooperation. Finland supports a broad portfolio of in interventions aimed at strengthening domestic taxation capacities in Africa and at enhancing the voice of Africa in global dialogues about tax policy. We also recognize the important groundwork that our other partners, including the African Tax Administration Forum and Tax Justice Network Africa are doing. The UN FACTI panel launched their report last week. We greatly value the work that our Norwegian and Lithuanian neighbors have been doing regarding this. Together with many other partners, we hope and trust that both the OECD and UNDP will be able to create synergies and play your optimal roles in promoting the same objectives. We often say in Finland that we are a nation of happy taxpayers. This is quite exceptional from a global perspective. It's not a coincidence, it's a result of years of hard work in building a social contract for a government that not only taxes companies and individuals, but also delivers value for the taxes collected. Public services, social protection and infrastructure that enhances productivity and social cohesion. In recent years, it's also a result of the investments that we have made into digital technology and customer service of the Finnish tax administration. Finland is a credible player in spreading these good practices. 
We have developed strong know-how on how to combine data, economic automation and trust into a unified digital platform. Therefore, please, not, please do not hesitate to call on Finland if you need partners from the private or public sector who are motivated and capable of innovating new digital and other solutions to enhance the domestic resource mobilization, trust and social contracts. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me uh, thank you, our distinguished speakers. I think that is a perfect framing of the conversation we're going to have now. Before we move into the conversation, it is my great pleasure on behalf of the United Nations Development Program to introduce you, as Mr. Guria just said, to the new chair of TIWB Secretariat, Rusudan Kimularia. She's going to as you know, we are launching today our uh, 2020 annual report, and she's going to give us the highlights. Rusudan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, I'm deeply honored to have been appointed as head of uh, the uh, Tax Inspectors Without Borders Secretariat. I want first to, uh, to pay tribute to my predecessor, James Karanja, and the wider TIWB team who's in Paris and New York, whose vision and uh, tireless work have contributed so much to the continued success of the initiative. Looking ahead, our goal will be to further strengthen the TIWB by making it even more forward-looking, innovative, and attentive to the needs of developing countries. Ladies and gentlemen, now allow me to uh, present some highlights of annual report 2020. Tax Inspectors Without Borders, a joint initiative of the OECD and UNDP, is a unique approach to capacity building that embeds experts, tax auditors in developing country tax administrations to provide practical hands-on assistance on actual tax audits and related international tax issues. The reach of the TIWB programs continues to expand across all the regions of the world. As of 2020, TIWB had 40 completed, 39 current and 19 upcoming programs. As the initiative has matured, opportunities for South-South cooperation were encouraged in 2019 and 2020. The year 2019 and 2020 saw the number of uh, programs initiated in the Asia and the Pacific region double. Africa still accounts for more than half of total demand for the programs in 2019 and 20, reflecting well-established networks with ATA, the European Commission, the OECD, and the World Bank Group. Next slide, please. 2019-20 was a period of growth for TIWB. Audit assistance, including anonymized casework conducting during ATAF and uh, OECD uh, World Bank Group workshops, had led to increased tax revenues. As of June 2020, as already mentioned, additional tax revenues raised by the developing countries amount amounted to uh, 537 million USD. And overall tax assessment uh, in excess of uh, 1.84 million USD. Next slide, please. In addition uh, to increased tax revenues, post administration report other uh, positive incomes and outcomes. Uh, the transfer of the skills and confidence building and increase in organizational effectiveness, improved uh, uh, tax compliance, and uh, monitoring and evaluation to, uh, tools for measuring impact are being progressively improved. Initial recommendations are made in the recent stock take are under the implementation, especially to improve the measuring of the qualitative impact of the TIWB programs. Next slide, please. Impact of COVID-19 crisis. In operational terms, the crisis has prevented on-site TIWB missions since March 2020 but intensive efforts to facilitate remote assistance have sustained the majority of our current operations. Guidance on supporting the uh, secure transmission of confidential information has been provided systematically. Experience to date suggests that in many cases, remote support can provide highly flexible expert inputs for ongoing programs, 
but insufficient for initiating new programs where face-to-face -face contact and discussions are essential. Next slide, please. We have recently conducted this talk take and the summary of the report is available at TIWB webpage. The stock take concluded that TIWB is extremely well positioned initiative operating in a complex international landscape and its unique features have guided its implementation well so far. However, the stock take has demonstrated that the, uh, partially due to the rapid expansion, some important aspects of uh, guiding policy framework could be strengthened. Next slide, please. The stock take also concluded that TIWB should expand into the new tax areas, such as tax and crime investigations, and recently uh, the rule of the mature maturity model, which is effective diagnostic tool for our programs, effective use of automatic exchange of information with collaboration uh, with the global forum, joint audits, tax treaty negotiation and administration and natural resources and environmental tax issues. So these new programs are in a very limited initial stage and the plan is to roll out from 2021. Next slide, please. So, and finally, today we launched a new report, uh, which is available, a full version in English, an executive summary in French and Span Spanish uh, languages. Lastly, as Churchill said, crisis brings new opportunities. He said this in a different context, but I think it's still relevant today. So uh, we will make TAWB more stronger to help developing countries uh, raise um, revenues, which are critical, especially during the COVID-19 era. We look forward to work with our partners, donors, and tax administrations in more than 60 jurisdictions to assist countries tackle tax evasion and tax avoidance and emerge stronger and more agile from the COVID-19 crisis. Thank you very much for your attention. Over to you, Marcus. Thank you very much, Rosudan. Um, as you've mentioned, as you've heard from the administrator of UNDP, this progress in tax inspectors without a border is also being put in a larger context of financing the response to the COVID crisis and beyond moving towards the sustainable development goals. In that sense, you know, the governments of Canada, Jamaica, and the Secretary General of the United Nations have created a process that started on May 26, and that tomorrow is going to have a dedicated discussion by heads of states on a menu of policy options that can be used and take forward you know, across very different aspects to address um, the financing needs of governments in developing countries around the world. One aspect of this conversation is we are delighted to see that the Tax Inspectors Without Border is one of the policies in the menu to try to address the issues of illicit financial flow, uh, which is essential in the conversation of debt restructuring, the conversation recovering better for sustainability in that sense. So we are delighted to be recognized in that context. And you are going to hear from one of the leaders of this process, His Excellency, the Minister of Finance from Jamaica, uh, Nigel Clark, in a minute. So let me just uh, thank you all from, from my side and from the United Nations Development Program. As the administrator said, we value our partnership with Governor Finland, um, Norway, and any other partner governments, and above all, with our partner in, in implementing TAWB, the OECD. Thank you very much. And I'm handed over now to uh, my counterpart at the OECD and my good friend, Ben Dixon, the head of global relations and development divisions in the OECD Center for Tax Policy and Administration. We'll carry on for the rest of the session. And let me just once and uh, thanks the permanent representative mission of Finland um, in New York to co-host this event with us. Ben, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Marcos. Uh, great to see you uh, looking so well. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody else. Um, it's, uh, I don't need an introduction. Uh, Marcus has already introduced me. Uh, but it's my pleasure to guide you through the second part of our meeting on the topic of supporting 
financing for development in the COVID era through Tax Inspectors Without Borders. And the plan is that uh, shortly I will pose um, a question or two to our three excellent panellists and uh, they will have a stab at uh, answering those questions in four to five minutes. Then uh, looking at the clock, it looks like we will still probably have time for some Q&A. So uh, whilst you're listening to uh, our three speakers, please use the Q&A uh, function on Zoom. Uh, and it helps us uh, greatly, I know from experience, if you could keep those questions uh, rather short, that will help us all. Um, but without uh, further ado, um, let me, I should say, uh, welcome also to uh, Rusudan. It's great to have you uh, on the team. Uh, but let me introduce our three panellists. So firstly, Minister Nigel Clark, Minister of Finance and Public Service of Jamaica. And as uh, Marcus has said, uh, Minister Clark is integral to discussions at uh, UNGA this week. Uh, importantly for uh, Tax Inspectors Without Borders, uh, the Minister has direct experience and involvement in TIWB, so we'll look forward to hearing from you in a second, Minister. Secondly, Mary Bainer, who is Director of Programmes at the Africa Tax Administration Forum, ATAF, and uh, Mary and her colleagues at Af ATAF uh, have been a great partner to both uh, OECD and uh, UNDP. Uh, Mary has also recently joined the TIWB Governing Board. Welcome to you, Mary. And finally, uh, John Christensen, who is Chair of the Tax Justice Network, and I should say is actually, I think, probably the, the original architect of Tax Inspectors Without Borders in the aftermath of the uh, financial crisis. And uh, John has been a, a, a board member of TIWB uh, from the outset. So, uh, let me uh, begin, uh, first of all, with uh, Minister Clark. Good morning to you, uh, Minister Clark. Let me, let me ask you um, a question about um, your experience of uh, Tax Inspectors Without Borders. Can you tell us how the TIWB approach of real-time practical audit assistance has uh, been a game changer, or otherwise, for tax administration uh, in Jamaica? So, Minister, the floor is yours. Uh, good morning, and uh, thank you for uh, the introduction. Uh, Jamaica is very grateful to the OECD and the UNDP for the joint initiative of Tax Inspectors Without Borders. I'll just start with a, a bit of a background. Uh, for decades, Jamaica's tax system was dogged by outdated laws and a need to improve the technical capacity of the staff to meet the modern uh, needs of and the, you know, address the global tax landscape. The government, with the support of our multilateral partners, uh, which included IMF, the World Bank, and the IDB, embarked on several economic reforms. Uh, the most significant of these was to reform the tax laws with an emphasis on information gathering and compliance and anti-avoidance measures. And it was against this background that the transfer pricing regime was introduced uh, and that began Jamaica's relationship with tax inspectors without borders. And with the assistance of the OECD Tax and Development Unit, uh, a two-pronged approach was devised. The first was that we received technical assistance, support from the OECD to draft amendments to the Income Tax Act to introduce a transfer pricing regime in 2015. And this assistance included a three-year training program with lawyers, uh, tax policy and tax appeal staff, auditors, etc. And the format allowed for tax officials to be better acquainted with the new laws. And secondly, there's a capacity building that was further strengthened with the assistance of the Tax Inspectors Without Borders Initiative, with a particular attention being paid to the building of capacity of the audit staff. The benefits, uh, the, and, and the, uh, the great thing about the TIWB program is, is that it was formatted to suit the needs of Jamaica uh, regarding our legal system, our resources, our culture, uh, political sensitivities, and other appropriate considerations. And so the highlights for us were, you know, the transfer of knowledge, the capacity building of tax officials is the only realistic way uh, to bridge the skills gap that are necessary. And TIWB offered Jamaica the opportunity to have experts on the ground 
working directly with staff and providing guidance on live audit issues, which makes all the difference. This expertise can then be transferred to more persons rather than having to send a few persons overseas for training. It's much more effective when it's live on the ground. And training workshops were particularly helpful. Um, and in addition, the, the second way I would say is that the, the selection of experts with familiarity of our particular legal system, given the Commonwealth uh, sort of background of our legal system, uh, TIWB was able to select persons who you know, were able to appreciate the peculiarities and idiosyncrasies. And of course, the responsiveness of the TIWB secretariat uh, has been extremely beneficial. Now, the, in, a, in a sort of tangible way, uh, having TIWB on the ground has meant you know, increased uh, transfer price in audits, more accurate assessments, uh, increase in uh, the returns being filed, a significant increase in uh, corporate income tax arising from these returns, uh, improved documentation and record keeping by companies. And, uh, you know, when one considers that the introduction of the transfer pricing regime in Jamaica was characterized with skepticism by professionals, uh, by persons in the private sector, by even lawmakers about the likely success of the regime, uh, we have come a long way uh, over the past five years, still a lot to learn but there's no way we'd have had that success without tax inspectors without borders. And again, having inspectors on the ground uh, participating in live audits made all the difference. I'm observing your four minute time limit and so I'll stop here for now. Thank you very much, uh, Minister, for giving us your insights as to what it's like to actually experience uh, tax inspectors without borders. And uh, while we're on the, the, the topic of the practicalities, there are a couple of uh, questions that have already come in, which we may as well address now. Um, colleagues from Malawi are asking, uh, who pays? And uh, I can tell you that uh, this is all grant financed, grant financed by our development partners. So there is, uh, there is no fee to any uh, country who uh, benefits from tax inspectors without borders. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Minister. We'll definitely come back to you uh, in a bit to um, expand the conversation out a bit, which is what I think we'll do now with you, Mary, if, that's, if you're ready. Um, I mean, Tax Inspectors Without Borders is one practical tool, um, but we are delivering uh, this uh, exciting programme uh, in a rather new uh, era of uh, COVID-19 pandemic restrictions. So my question to you is, what are the next steps for African tax, administration, African tax administrations to address the lasting impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic? And how can tax inspectors without borders help there? The floor is yours. Thank you, Ben, and um, greetings to everyone. Uh, I wish to say that um, I'm very happy to participate in this conversation and uh, to say that uh, right at the outset, it was a pleasure to work with James Karanja and it is also a pleasure that we'll be working with Rusodan and we wish her every success. So that said, to answer your question, Ben, uh, as you know, African economies like everywhere else in the world have been decimated by the restrictions that were put in place uh, to deal with COVID-19. Indeed, uh, post-COVID, the urgent need to alter these policies and try to mitigate the effects of the pandemic on the economy. Uh, for instance, there had been a lot of deferring of filing and payment dates. There were tax waivers on health products. There were a couple of policy decisions taken. So it will be important to, to revisit this. So African policymakers and administrators will need to do this um, and try to strike a right balance, uh, Ben, in encouraging appropriate direct uh, foreign direct investment and also to support recovery of existing businesses, of course, also with the view of trying to raise revenue that is needed to rebuild the economies. So some of the key steps that uh, we have looked at as ATAF is, um, and I say this uh, after a, an exercise that we did where we were able to talk to most of the tax administrations and work with them, especially 
you know, during COVID, uh, the, during the lockdown, and even as uh, governments relax the lockdown, because uh, like you said, together with the OECD and uh, the other partners, together with TIWB and uh, other players, we were able to continue uh, delivering this support. So some of the steps that we've identified, Ben, are indeed, like I said, African governments and administrations need to urgently re revisit their tax policy because we noticed that where there was a broader tax mix in the countries, there was, uh, they were able to, you know, to sustain their collections and they were able to go on working. For instance, uh, when we spoke to Kenya, it was clear that because there was a broader tax mix, uh, they were able to collect some money from, for instance, high net worth individuals. The second area that governments and revenue authorities will need to prioritize, and this is one of the prime areas where, you know, we all need to focus. And I was happy to hear the, the Honorable Minister from Finland uh, talk about uh, the support that they'll be providing in the infrastructure area because this is an area where governments need to prioritize, to prioritize investment in IT infrastructure so that a lot more work is able to be delivered. The fact that audits didn't stop in the lockdown is a clear indication that the virtual delivery is really uh, effective. And again, we're able to see this in Kenya uh, and South Africa, where access to third party information and uh, was able to help them uh, in their audits. Again, governments will need to change not only the policy here, but the legislation as well to support this. Then the third area is that tax administrations will need to reevaluate their approaches to encourage voluntary compliance, at the same time combat illicit financial flaws. For example, a lot of companies are going to definitely um, file new returns or they will report losses. So how long are governments prepared to take these losses forward and the fourth and final point, Ben, is that there's need for an urgent need for focused risk assessment to enable RRS uh, revenue authorities prioritize their audit functions and therefore place their resources better. So uh, we at ATAP are happy to work with TIWB and we know that uh, one of the approaches that we all need to, to adapt is that the, the technical assistance we provide should be one that provides sustainable sustainability in the countries and enables them to run these operations independently. Thank you, Ben. Thank you very much, Mary. Uh, you have uh, already answered uh, an additional question that has uh, come in as we've been speaking, which is how on earth is TIWB managing to operate given the travel restrictions and um, you've set out um, what's happening at your end and similarly uh, the majority of tax inspectors without borders work now is going virtual and uh, we're working hard on some of the technology that is required to uh, allow tax administrations to exchange information um, and at the same time to protect taxpayer confidentiality so thank you for that You've also raised uh, a very important issue about the balance between attracting uh, investors uh, with revenue needs. And uh, I think that's the, the perfect segue uh, to introduce John. And John, the, the, uh, the question uh, for you is really about, um, it really strikes at the heart of this issue. Um, I think 10 years ago that uh, you or more that uh, you were involved in the creation of uh, the idea, at least, of Tax Inspectors Without Borders. And that was in part due to the uh, response to the, the financial crisis. And here we are again in a more serious crisis. And tax systems around the world are actually being used now to try and relieve the burden from households and firms to give them more time to pay, for example. Yet at the same time, uh, I think it's fair to say that the, the tolerance for tax avoidance and tax evasion is now hitting an all-time low. So I guess um, the question for, for you is, uh, what, is the, what is the message for, for TIWB in this, in this uh, complicated uh, context? Over to you. Well, thanks, Ben, and good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Um, I'm very grateful for this opportunity to take part 
And uh, I'd like to congratulate the tax inspectors with our board's team for making progress in such very challenging times. I'd also like to welcome Ruzadam to her new post heading the Secretariat and, and give my belated thanks to uh, outgoing head of Secretariat, James Karanja. Um, he's made a truly awesome contribution uh, to the startup of tax inspectors without borders. Now, uh, and it is absolutely the case that public tolerance for tax avoidance and for tax evasion has decreased significantly in recent years and in recent months during the COVID, COVID period. And I hope that the days when rich and powerful people could boast that not paying tax is a sign of being a smart person are at an end. Now, from, from my perspective, I, I remain concerned that illicit financial flows are still going on uh, in very large volumes. Um, and so I welcome the fact that Tax Inspectors Without Borders in its 2019 report said that it, it is responding to this issue by deploying expertise to build capacity to handle the huge volume of information now being shared under automatic information sharing processes. I think from a civil society perspective, this is crucial to tackling illicit financial flows and tax avoidance and evasion. And we hope to see more developing countries benefit from this capacity building in the coming years. So I'm looking forward to receiving feedback from the pilot program that you launched in November 2019. And I hope that many developing countries will eventually benefit from technical assistance in this area. I also hope to see tax inspectors without borders playing a very positive role in the coming years with tax treaty negotiations. Uh, as many of us know, there is widespread concern that some of the existing treaties negotiated in recent decades have been uh, suboptimal, to put it mildly, uh, particularly from the point of view of developing countries. Indeed, my colleagues at Tax Justice Network Africa have very recently, and I mean last week, filed a constitutional petition at the Kenyan High Court challenging the legitimacy of existing tax treaties with other countries, particularly, uh, I don't know, don't want to sound, mention uh, names, but they, they challenged existing treaties with 10 countries. And earlier this year, Senegal cancelled an existing treaty arrangement, which it claimed had costed over a quarter of a billion dollars in lost revenue since, it was, since the treaty was negotiated in 2002. Now, I can see two aspects to this problem which tax inspectors without borders can help to uh, remedy. The first lies with tax treaty policy formulation. They may, there may well be a legacy of weak policies reflecting past pressures coming maybe from international financial institutions which have weakened withholding tax arrangements in order to provide a, a, a more competitive tax regime. Now I reject thinking behind tax competition um, and I, I would urge a rethink of tax policy in this context from my experience, special tax treatments achieve little other than to transfer wealth to the pocket of, of investors and not to the countries receiving the inward investment. Now, a second part of the problem might lie with capacity to negotiate tax treaties. And I welcome Tax Inspectors Without Borders proposal for a new initiative to provide technical support for tax treaty negotiation and administration. And again, I look forward to receiving feedback on this initiative as it develops. So Ben, that's my immediate comment um, in reply to, to your questions. Um, and uh, uh, again, I'd like to congratulate you and your colleagues on, on um, the way in which you have been able to shift to a virtual, um, extending your services virtually uh, and I, I hope you will continue to, continue to act effectively in this respect in the coming months. Thank you very much, John. And thank you in particular for highlighting where we hope Tax Inspectors Without Borders will go 
in the fight against illicit financial flows with two very uh, precise uh, instruments there, uh, one on the automatic exchange of information uh, and the other on uh, tax crime investigation. So thank you for that. Um, we've got a bit of uh, time to go, so I'll, I'll gather up some questions that I'm looking at um, uh, as you've been speaking on chat. And uh, I'll just read out three to start with. And uh, Minister Mary and John, you're, you're welcome in turn to uh, answer all or any of these. Uh, you'll have to be rather short, I'm afraid. Um, the first is uh, about measurement. Tax Inspectors Without Borders has uh, made uh, quite a lot of the revenue impact measurement. But uh, what are the other sorts of uh, measurements that we ought to be thinking about beyond revenue. Uh, a second is how important is South-South cooperation in the, the context of uh, tax inspectors without borders? And then I think um, there's a particular uh, question for you, uh, Minister, which is where does tax inspectors without borders actually fit in in your, your other priorities, your other fiscal priorities as uh, Jamaica emerges from the COVID crisis. Um, so um, if we go in turn, Minister, the floor is yours. Uh, if you'd like to respond to uh, one or more of those questions, over to you. If you please unmute yourself. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I'll, I'll take the last question about uh, where does tax inspectors without borders fit uh, you know, in this given this COVID crisis going forward. Uh, clearly, rebuilding the economy is the number one priority and uh, tax collection, tax compliance is a, a key element of that effort. Uh, one of the things that we're going to have to be working on uh, is going to be the, the digitalization of tax administration and of tax collection. One thing that, that the pandemic has brought to bear is the uh, efficiencies that can be gained uh, from such a process and the inefficiencies that exist if everything has to be manual and paper-based. The other priority is going to be to make efforts to increase the formalization of our economy, uh, to have more and more persons partake in the formal systems of the economy. And that will require reforming uh, a lot of our uh, legislation and reforming using technology to make it easier for persons to be a part of the system. Persons are not a part of the system uh, for a variety of reasons, but one of the more significant reasons is that the system does not meet the society where it is, if you understand what I'm saying, in that uh, it is difficult to, uh, to comply for many persons who are, you know, in the informal economy. And so we want to reform uh, using technology uh, to make it easier for persons to uh, comply, to broaden the, uh, the base of those who are participating and contributing and make it uh, and improve the customer service element and the uh, ease with which uh, persons can participate, even as at the, the other end of the spectrum, we continue to make advances to uh, conclude on our commitments and our arrangements in the international sphere and uh, put ourselves in a position where we can uh, participate and benefit from uh, the international agreements that we're party to. Thank you very much for that, Minister. And uh, you're, you're not the first person to have said that the digitalization of tax administration, particularly tax collection, is a critical priority uh, in many countries. And uh, we, the OECD, and I'm sure my, my colleagues at uh, the UN, the IMF, and the World Bank, we all stand by to see what we can do to help on that uh, huge issue. Um, Mary, would you like to respond uh, next to a couple of those? Um, thank you, Ben. I'll just respond to two, and I'll, um, since the minister has handled the issues to do with digitization, I'll talk about 
uh, the issue of audits. And I think one of the areas where TIWB is really going to be very helpful and the other partners is uh, the issue that I talked about where there's need to prioritize some of the sectors that were largely not affected by the pandemic. And uh, naturally those sectors are also some of the ones that are harder to tax, like the digital area and secondly, the telecoms. So I think this is where TIWB will come in handy to support countries uh, to carry out these audits. And luckily we have been uh, uh, all you know, pleasantly uh, surprised that actually the virtual delivery of audits has enabled uh, a quick turnaround time for the audit periods and therefore even the revenue collection comes in much faster. So that is one of the key areas that uh, uh, I think TIWB will need to concentrate on. The second one is uh, the issue that you mentioned on South-to-South -South cooperation. I couldn't agree with you more because I think uh, what is very, very evident, at least from the experience that we've had, is that the auditors that we've used, for instance, we've been, uh, as you know, Ben, in uh, some of the efforts that we're working on together, for instance, in uh, Eswatini, in Botswana and other countries, we've been getting auditors from the continent to come and support, you know, some of these countries. And what is clear is that they provide uh, examples or they provide solutions at, uh, that are, you know, that are very, not only just relevant, but are very similar because they have, have had uh, basically the same experiences and they operate in more or less the same environment. So I think this is an area that where TIWB can grow and where I think we'll excel. And as I said, uh, build sustainability in building capacity within the revenue authorities themselves. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. And uh, for those of you who uh, are able to look at the uh, annual report, which you'll, you'll find um, online any minute now, um, we are working hard at South-South Cooperation and I'm sure we will be able to do more. So, uh, John, uh, we're desperately short of time. So perhaps in, um, in 30 seconds or a minute, you could uh, give your final word on this topic. Well, I think Ben, uh, I'll do it short than that because I, I just want to agree wholeheartedly with the comments made about digital, uh, you know, moving to a digital economy and also um, the comments about audit. I have nothing further to add than that other than to, to uh, again, wish uh, you well in the coming year, given the challenges facing all of us. Thank you very much. Um, I'm afraid we are completely out of time. And as we're um, part of the uh, UNGA programme, I'm afraid we've got to strictly observe our virtual space. Um, so we'll be leaving you shortly. But uh, let me uh, thank wholeheartedly uh, the Minister, Mary and John, for your excellent presentations. I think three very quick points of follow up uh, about what we're going to do next at TIWB. Uh, firstly, TIWB is very much open for business and uh, we're working hard on making sure that we can continue remotely uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, we're very keen to extend the model into the other areas of uh, tax that you've heard all about and we've got a huge uh, agenda going forward to uh, test and explore different areas. Um, and then finally, um, we will come back to you uh, in 2021 on how we're getting on and uh, hope to uh, make this an annual event in the context of UNGA to say how we're getting on. So I think that's all from us here and I'd like to thank you all for joining us. I hope you found it interesting and a particular thanks to our great friends uh, in the permanent representation of uh, Finland in New York and our friends in Helsinki for hosting us. So thank you very much. And a final, final word, could the panelists just remain online for a quick photo? Everybody else, thank you very much and uh, hope you have a great day. Thank you.